At any given moment, half of the Earth is facing the Sun and is therefore in daytime, while the other half is facing away from the Sun and is therefore experiencing nighttime. However, that doesn't mean that any given place on Earth gets 12 hours of daytime and 12 hours of night. That only happens twice a year on the equinoxes. The number of daylight hours for the rest of the year actually varies. Let me explain why. Let's look at an equinox first. On about September 23rd every year, the Sun is directly above the equator and the Earth is not tilted towards the Sun or away from the Sun at all. So everywhere on Earth gets about 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night. Here for example is Melbourne in the Southern Hemisphere and here is Tokyo in the Northern Hemisphere. I've put some plasticine onto the cities so that you can see them more clearly. Tokyo and Melbourne aren't exactly on the same line of longitude, that is on the same meridian, but they're pretty close at 140 degrees east and 145 degrees east, and they're both about the same distance from the equator, which means they have similar latitudes, although one is north and one is south of course. So given their similarity on either side of the equator, they make a good pair of cities to compare and contrast. Here we can see that the Americas are in daytime. As the Earth turns, Melbourne and Tokyo both come into sunlight, that is, they see the sun rise, at about the same time. And then after the Earth rotates one half turn, 12 hours later, they both go into night time, that is, they see the sun set at about the same time. Now what happens as the Earth moves around? Three months later, on around the 21st of December every year, the December solstice, the Earth moves to this position. Now we have a completely different situation. The southern hemisphere is facing more towards the Sun, and the Sun is directly over the Tropic of Capricorn. As the Earth turns, Melbourne is hit by the Sun way before Tokyo is, even though the two cities are roughly in line with each other. Tokyo doesn't see the Sun until about two hours later. In fact, Melbourne gets nearly 15 hours of daylight on December the 21st. After midday, which occurs for both cities at about the same time, the sun starts going down and sets in Tokyo much earlier than it does in Melbourne. About three hours earlier in fact. Tokyo gets only about a nine and a half hour day in late December. So in December, Melbourne and the Southern Hemisphere in general gets long days and short nights while the reverse is true for places in the Northern Hemisphere, which get short days and long nights. So not only is the Southern Hemisphere receiving more direct sunlight, the length of the days are longer, so it's actually receiving more sunlight. This means that the Southern Hemisphere gets hotter. If we look from the side of the Earth on the December solstice, so that we can see the sunlit side of the Earth and the side having nighttime, and show the paths that Melbourne and Tokyo take as they go around and around, it's pretty clear that Melbourne and other cities in the Southern Hemisphere spend most of the time in sunlight and not much time in darkness. The opposite is true of Tokyo and other cities in the Northern Hemisphere, which spend most of their time facing away from the sun. Six months later, it's going to be the other way around. So as I said, in summer, the days are longer and the nights are shorter, while the opposite is true in winter. Thanks for watching this short excerpt from Shedding Light on the Sun and Earth, Episode 2, Long Hot Summer Days. The Shedding Light on the Sun and Earth series introduces students to the basics of climate science. We examine what causes seasons, why the days are longer in summer than they are in winter, how the movement of the sun across the sky affects the renewable energy industry, and a whole lot more. In episode 2, Long Hot Summer Days, we explain why summer days are long and winter days are short, and how the length of daytime contributes to seasonal variations in temperature. We look at how the sun's location above the earth changes throughout the year, and finish the program with a brief look at daylight saving. Like all of our programs, Long Hot Summer Days comes with an outstanding student activity sheet. Visit the Liakos Educational Media website to download the sheet and to find out how you can watch the whole program. You'll also discover all of the other programs in the Shedding Light series. They are revolutionising science education. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.